a lot of parents don't talk about, teachers absolutely don't talk about it. I'm gonna tell you a little secret that A&M people are going to hate. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Victoria. I do lifestyle and college content. And girl, basically, I'm trying to prevent you from getting scammed in college. That's not all of the points, but that's honestly a lot of the points which I just realized. How to not blow all of your money on things that really you don't need. Oh my god, I forgot to pop my gum. I'm a senior in college and before I went to college, I thought it'd be like the movies. I thought it would be partying all of the time and meeting so many friends and getting classes that I love and just grand old American college experience. That's a lie. That's a big fat f lie. You might be able to tell that I'm just like slightly salty about my experience and I feel like even though I had a very unique experience, I was not able to experience four years of like one university. I went to two years in a community college and then two years at a bigger university, Texas A&M, but I only get one on-campus year because of COVID, and that's this year, my senior year. So yeah, college has been kind of shitty for like a lot of people that are going right now, but if you are in high school and you're about to go into college, you're probably going to have a different experience from us. Nevertheless, I wanted to tell you 12 things that I wish I knew before college because it might have changed how I did things. Number one, as I said, it's not like the movies. I feel like in America, we kind of idealize this college experience. Like this is something that everyone waits to do up from like the age of 10 and they can't wait to graduate high school just to have this college experience. Here's the thing though, and this is even more relevant if you're like a STEM major, 90% of what you're doing is working, either on school stuff or you're working to make money to buy groceries. The first two years of school, I didn't even have time to socialize. I went to school and then I went to work and I came home at midnight and I slept and that's what I did. That was my entire experience. But that's why my goal this year is to actually be more social, meet new people and try to put myself out there because I really don't wanna just work through my college. So before even going to school, to college, be sure that your expectations aren't set too, too high because you might be a little disappointed I know I sure was. Number two, most of your money is going to be eaten up by food. It is so hard to not spend money on food. And you go into it thinking that you're gonna be super like organized and prepared and you're gonna have like maybe this money set aside for food and you're not gonna spend $100 in a week on food. But somehow money just disappears into the atmosphere and it's caused by Whataburger and Panera. It honestly is my biggest expense and it's my friend's expenses too after talking to them and that's because you either go to a day with a lot of classes and you forget your lunch so you have to buy lunch on campus or your friends want to go out and then you have to buy food because you're out late and you didn't have time to make dinner or you have friends over and y'all don't want to cook so then you order in and uber eats Oh, Uber Eats takes all of my money. It is so expensive. The price tag of just the fees is horrible. It's like a $5 delivery fee and then a $2 service fee. And then you have to tip on top of that. And all of your money just goes towards food because it's simply more convenient. As a college student, you have very little time, especially involved in orgs and stuff. So yeah, definitely watch how much money you're putting towards food. Number three, professors will not help you if you don't ask. And I know that kind of sounds like, well, duh, you should ask for help. But I'm talking about you can have classes where you never even have to speak to the prof if you don't put effort in. They literally can go the whole semester without putting your name to your face. You can go the whole semester without having a conversation with them. This is why it's so important to either go up to the professor at the end of class and ask your questions or introduce yourself. It's also really important to go to office hours. I know now there's a lot of um, students that can zoom into office hours, which makes it so much easier and less intimidating. But yeah, if you 
fail a test, they're not going to go up to you and be like, why are you doing so bad? Are you not understanding this stuff? Do you need help? Yeah, they don't care. Like they have other things to do. They really won't care at all unless you ask. Number five, you're probably going to change your major at least once. And I know what some of y'all are thinking. Well, I've always wanted to be a doctor. Oh, well, I've always wanted to be a writer. Oh, well, I've always wanted to be a teacher. Trust me. Trust me, I've seen it time and time again. Once you go into your classes and you realize what you like and dislike about the subject you are going into, things can flip like that. For me personally, I went in as a comm major and then I switched to biology because I really wanted to do marine biology and study coral, but I couldn't pass chemistry. So I went back to communication because that's what I'm good at is like digital marketing and content creation and stuff like that. So if you go in there and your major is not what you'd expect it to be and you're thinking about changing, you're not the only one. It happens to the best of us and that's completely normal. You don't have to have your dead set major, your freshman or or even your your sophomore year the sun is in my way it is like making my face look so dark compared let's see if i can move up okay i'm a little closer to the camera maybe this is better maybe the lighting will fix itself i'm gonna get a suntan on just this forearm and then the rest of me is gonna be pale <laughs> number six never buy your textbooks Ever. You can get it cheaper on so many different websites. Some have free textbooks, but even renting from your school is another option that is fairly cheap. At least at my school, it's cheap. Um, but also this semester, I used a rental service through Amazon, which sent me my books within two days and it's free two-day shipping back. Textbooks can cost you hundreds of dollars and there is no reason for you to spend hundreds of dollars on textbooks when you can get perfectly fine textbooks right on the internet, shipped to your door, and you just put them back. You don't even have to figure out how to sell them when you're done. The only reason that you might want to buy a textbook is if you are a huge, like, highlighter kind of person but even in some like rented textbooks there's already underlined stuff like i've had textbooks come in that were rented and there were already like underlined stuff and notes so i just added to it and it really helped a lot but if you are someone who really needs to highlight their stuff and really needs like a hard cover copy. But I think the money outweighs the usability, but that's just my preference. Number seven, no one is going to care about your GPA when you graduate, unless you want to go into higher education and get your master's or your doctorate. I hate the notion that your GPA is the most important thing in the world in high school and in college and it's just simply not there's too much of a pressure for people to keep up their gpas and you put so much sweat and tears and work into trying to maintain a certain gpa this is especially if you are sacrificing your mental health and your physical health all for the sake of your grades when in the end no one is even going to care about your scrap of paper because once you go into the workforce they care about what you can do for them they don't care about your academic performance obviously unless you failed like all of your classes in which case you're not gonna get your your certificate so if you fail a test now and then please don't be too hard on yourself. It's definitely different from high school because in high school, you have this expectation to have the highest GPA so you can get into the colleges that you want. Um, even with an okay GPA, I didn't even get into the college that I wanted. And that was with me being the president of a huge org, being part of other organizations, volunteering is honestly, it's all BS. But in college, your GPA isn't going to be used against or for you when you graduate. The only thing that matters when you graduate is that you have your degree. So again, if you are damaging your mental health because you're trying to keep your GPA up, just remember, it's about the degree. It is not about the number. I don't know what's going on with the sun, but now it's now it's like perfect lighting. Um, honestly, it's just the sun going down. 
that's it. <laughs> Number eight, there is no reason for you to go to a university for all four years, especially if it is an expensive one. In high school, I almost made a very big mistake. My dream school was University of New Hampshire, which as you might or might not know, is over $70,000 a year. Actually, I'm just gonna check this real quick to see how much it is like this year. Okay, it looks like it's gone down throughout the years. Again, this was four years ago. It now says that tuition and living expenses and stuff like that is about $50,000 for non-residents per year. I think about how if I decided to go to UNH, I would have been $200,000 in debt. <laughs> And that's really bad. <laughs> because I didn't get into A&M first time around, I decided to move to Texas anyways to College Station and go to Bling College, which was the local community college. And I'm gonna tell you a little secret that A&M people are going to hate, but I liked Blinn more than I like A&M. The atmosphere was a lot more peaceful. The classes were small and the students were all very hard working. The professors were kind of mixed, but I had a lot of really caring professors. And it was only a couple thousand dollars a semester. I am so glad that I went. I could have gone to another school that I got into, which was Texas State University, but I decided to go to Blinn, which saved me so much money. With scholarships and everything like that, I'm going to come out of college with like a couple thousand dollars in debt. Like I will probably be able to pay it off within the first year of being out of school. So don't fall into the mindset that going to community college is worse than going to a bigger university because I had a really good experience and I am very happy with my decision. Of course, people might not want to do that for the social atmosphere, but I met so many friends at Blinn and that was really disrupted by COVID. But your social situation is going to change just depending on how much energy you give it. How many friends you have completely depends on how much energy you put into it. <laughs> so it's important to think about the long term. Are you willing to spend $30,000 for two extra years, which is $60,000 at an out-of-state school or in-state? Like if you go to Yukon, it's $30,000 even if you're in-state. Or are you going to save $60,000 and only go to Yukon or A&M or wherever you're going two years and come out of college in a much better position? That's just a personal opinion. You can tell me that you disagree with me. That's totally fine. Um, I just think that if you are in a relatively financially tight spot, that would be a really great option and it doesn't take away from your experience. Hello, oh my God, please just level out. I can't see. That is just so bright. I'm gonna try moving it this way. <laughs> that is so much better. Uh, the sun was all in my face and it was making me dark on camera, so. This is slightly better. Number nine, get a credit card ASAP. I just feel like most American students simply were not talked to about credit. And I realize that's an important thing now. <laughs> as soon as you're 18 and you have some form of income coming in, it can be from work, it can be even from your parents, it can be from unemployment. If you have some sort of money coming in, you are eligible for a credit card. My personal credit card is Bank of America Travel Rewards because I just wanna travel, that's all I wanna do. And on my credit card, I put groceries and activities that I do, restaurants, any other miscellaneous expenses. My rent doesn't go on it, but I essentially use my credit card whenever I can. And then I pay it off several days before the payment is due. If you do this as a student, throughout your four or three years of school, you're building your credit slowly. And this will really, really benefit you when you graduate. In order to get a car or to get a house or to get a loan, all of this requires a credit. So just start that as soon as you can. It's just really important and something that I feel like a lot of parents don't talk about. Teachers absolutely don't talk about it. Just do your own research on credit, get a credit card. 
hard. And number 10, depending on your location, being in an apartment can actually be a lot cheaper than living on campus. I personally had no choice but to live in an apartment because I was going to a community college, but I'm really grateful that I was. Now roommates are a whole other issue, but financially being in an apartment is probably a good option for you. Being on campus, even if you're in a dorm, is ridiculously expensive. And then you have to buy like food passes or whatever whatever they are on campus and that food is expensive and it's unhealthy but the average cost of apartments even one bedroom apartments compared to the actual apartments on campus, not the dorms, but the actual apartments are less expensive. Of course, this all depends on your location. If you're in the city, I have no idea, but I'm kind of like in the middle of suburb and city. College station is very weird, but it's more suburb than city, I personally think. So living here is cheap really cheap on campus you also really don't get like that many amenities like you're not going to have a pool you might not have a stove you might not even have a laundry unit so definitely just compare and contrast what are the prices of living on campus including food and what are the prices of living off campus on average so yeah those are the things that i wish i knew before getting into college so i really hope that this is helpful for you especially if you are in high school and you are getting ready to go into college. There are many, many, many things that may surprise you in college. So hopefully this will prepare you a little bit better um, to be more financially successful, to be more successful in school, and to have a little stress, a little bit of weight off of your shoulders when it comes to your grades or how to deal with certain classes. And thank y'all so, so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. And if you wanna see more from me, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you get notifications every single time that I post and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye guys.